Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar. My name is Barnes van Wijk, I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology. We are passionate about students, education and our industry. If you have a burning desire to make a difference, to make this country, this continent and this world a better place for all living beings, then you are certainly in good company. Before I introduce you to the rest of the team tonight, I want to reach out to you with a special invite to help us change the world. Thank you. The directors of the schools of engineering, the built environment and civil engineering, IT and architecture are now going to introduce you to our programs. First up, we have Mr. Alan Roberts, the director of engineering. Over to you, Alan. Unmute yourself, Alan. Hi there, my name is Alan Roberts. I'm the director of the School of Engineering at the Nelson Mandela University. I'm going to do a short presentation to show you what you can do with engineering at our university. If we go over to our presentation. Some of you will be leaving school next year, while others will need to make that all important decision about what subjects to choose at school. You can change the world by going into one of the careers offered in the field of engineering. The engineering team consists of a group of people in different specialities and skills. The members of the team are engineers, technologists, 
technicians and artisans. All are important as they bring different levels of knowledge and skills to the engineering team. At the Nelson Mandela University, we focus on the preparation and technical education of the engineer and technologist. The School of Engineering consists of five departments. Each of these departments focuses on different fields of engineering, but they do have one thing in common, teaching you to solve problems in the field of engineering to improve people's lives. The suite of engineering qualification that we offer allow you to choose from two higher certificates or four Bachelor of Engineering Technology or one Bachelor of Engineering qualification. If you meet the admission requirements, you can be admitted to any one of these qualifications directly. And if you are successful, you can graduate within the minimum period. After graduation, you'll be required to work in industry for a period of three to four years, gaining relevant engineering experience in order to reg register with the Engineering Council of South Africa as a professional engineering technologist or as a professional engineer. It is possible to progress to any of these bachelor qualifications after you've successfully completed one of the higher certificates. There are opportunities to further your studies up to the level of a doctorate. It is pretty much up to you as to how high you wish to progress. Literally, the sky is the limit. For each of these undergraduate engineering qualifications, there are admission requirements that must be met. Having completed a national senior certificate or a national certificate vocational, you need to obtain certain minimum marks in mathematics or technical mathematics and physical or technical science in some of the qualifications, as you will see for the first two. An applicant score is also required. Note, mathematical literacy is not accepted for admission to any of our qualifications. These are the different undergraduate qualifications that we offer in the School of Engineering. The qualifications in operations and quality management are only offered on a part-time basis to people working in industry. There has to be something of interest for you here. We offer a higher certificate in mechatronics engineering and a higher certificate in renewable energy engineering. This one starts in 2021. 20, These qualifications are vocationally orientated and which means that you gain very practical skills that you can use in the workplace and industry. The Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Electrical Engineering offers you the opportunities for a career that is both challenging and rewarding. You could be interested in the bulk generation, distribution and utilization of electrical power, the use of solar systems to generate power in many dwellings and industries, the control of automated electrical systems, including robotics, the development and control of electric vehicles, the very wide field of audio and video systems. A graduate with a Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Industrial Engineering will be able to go into industry and focus on the development of concepts, designs and systems for manufacturing processes and services. The industries that you could work in range from automotive manufacturing plants to pharmaceutical production facilities to automated agricultural systems, to name a few. The industrial engineering technologist is key in the development of efficient processes, quality assurance protocols, and systems for all sectors. The Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Marine Engineering was introduced in 2018 as a completely new field of engineering at the Nelson Mandela University. A marine engineer is responsible for the design operation, maintenance and repair of all equipment on board any ocean-going vessel above or below the water surface. Examples include small pleasure boats, large passenger cruise ships, cargo and oil tankers, oil drilling platforms and submarines. These vessels are made up of complex mechanical and automated systems such as propulsion mechanics, 
electrical power generation systems, lubrication and fuel systems, water distillation systems, and lighting and air conditioning systems. A Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Mechanical Engineering involves the design, development, and manufacture of mechanisms, structures and building trusses, engineering tools, all types of vehicles, and machines used in the manufacture of various products. An understanding of the properties of all materials is very important in this very vast field. A professional engineering technologist will eventually specialize in areas such as automotive engineering, power plant engineering, the manufacture of composite engineering materials, and many more. The Bachelor of Engineering in Mechatronics focuses on a combination of precision mechanical engineering, electronics, and computer systems, which are made up of mechanical components, electrical sensors, mechanical and electrical actuators, and computer controllers. These need to be integrated into products and systems useful to man and society. In order to combine all these elements in an optimal way that is cost effective, flexible, and with the highest performance, mechatronics engineers must have insight into each of these disciplines. All of these qualifications are endorsed by EXA and SAMHSA, the professional bodies that ensure that the qualifications we offer are relevant and meet the standards for a graduate to register as a professional in the various engineering disciplines. This is of importance when you wish to work in the engineering profession nationally or internationally. It certainly opens up your horizons. All qualifications are also accredited by CHE and registered with SACWA. Look for the SACWA ID when deciding what to study. Having seen what you could be doing, this leaves the decision firmly in your hands. Don't forget, if you want to study one of the engineering degree qualifications, but you don't meet the admission requirements, don't give up. There are two higher certificate in engineering qualifications that you can register for. Perform well and you'll be able to progress into one of the degree qualifications. We'll be looking forward to seeing you when you make that smart choice. The important contact details that you need to apply for admission programs are all on the screen. Switching back to our, from our presentation, I'd like to thank you all for listening to me. And I'd now like to turn over to my colleague, Dr. Supertatus. Over to you, Sue. Good evening, everybody. I'm Sue Petratos, and I am the director of the School of ICT. I'd like to welcome you this evening and give you a little bit of a rundown with regards to the type of um, opportunities that lie in the School of IT um, for you in future. First of all, I'm going to start looking at the higher certificate, Information Technology in User Support Services. Whether you are at a house, at a school, at a library, in a doctor's office or in a government building, everybody there has got a cell phone, has got a computer, has got some kind of electronic device that needs fixing. And this is where you will be able to fit in. This qualification allows you to work as an entry level technician or user support position that spans a wide range of computing environments requiring support personnel. So you need to share. I shared. Sorry. Apologies. So just to continue, the qualification allows you to enter, uh, be an entry level technician or user support position that spans a wide range of computing environments requiring support personnel. 
The Hayek Certificate is offered on our Port Elizabeth campus as well as our George campus. Please note that is in the Western Cape. The admission requirements for the highest certificate is 290 AS score if you have pure maths or technical maths and 305 if you have maths lit. Please also note that for maths lit you require a minimum of 55% and for technical and pure maths you require a minimum of 35%. Typical career activities are listed on the screen. Most importantly, when you want to be an um, IT technician or if you are going to be doing um, this higher uh, certificate in user support, it is important to be a people's person. So if IT is your world and technology is what you are interested in, I hope that you will consider the higher certificate in user support services. We also offer a diploma in information technology. The School of Information Technology offers a qualification that is designed to give you a grounding in the fundamental principles required to be an IT professional. In IT, there is a diverse range of skills that is required, and therefore, in our diploma, we offer you three options. You can do a diploma in support services, which focuses on being an the IT guru. So you are going to be the person who is going to um, help people who have got problems if their devices should fail. With regards to software development, you will be the person who is going to be creating the business solutions for small to, to large um, companies. Communication Networks Diploma allows students to work in the technology world and work with um, Wi-Fi and other communication networks. The admissions requirements for the IT development, uh, software development and support services are exactly the same. You require mathematics or technical ma mathematics at 40% and an AS score of 340, 330. Mathematical literacy must be at least a minimum of 60% and you must have an AS score of 345. For the Diploma IT Communication Networks, mathematics or technical mathematics at 45% minimum is required, as well as an AS score of 330. You do not need to have IT or CAT at school. However, these are recommended and will assist you when you do uh, come and study with us. Typical career fields that you can follow in IT are the web development, cloud architecture, health and IT specialists, and I'm sure you're all very much waiting to see the ever popular game developer. Well, these are indeed some of the careers that you can follow. And of course, being in IT, cutting edge technology, it means that there are even jobs that you have not even considered in your mind yet. We also offer a Bachelor in Information Technology. The Bachelor of Information Technology is suited for those people who are interested in the business, as well as uh, science, science and also who have got a very large focus on technology. It spans a little bit of all of these um, fields. The purpose of the Bachelor of Information Technology is to produce professionals that are capable of identifying opportunities for the design of software and IT solutions to improve industry and society. People who have got this qualification will be using technology to solve, business, to solve business problems. Most of the time you will be working with top high trending technology. The admissions requirements are minimum statutory requirement for bachelor, so you must have a bachelor pass. Your applicant score will be 370 and an NSC grade 12 mathematics or technical mathematics. Your mark here must be for maths 50% or for technical maths 50%. Maths Lit does not give you entry into the BIT. IT jobs in demand beyond 2020. Well, these are very popular jobs. And as I said previously, when you are working in uh, the IT field, the technology is ever changing. The jobs that are listed here are some of the uh, most popular jobs that you will uh, be doing beyond 2020. But why I'm showing you all of this if it is still far ahead in your future? Well, 
because everybody has a dream and your dream starts before you enter the university. I just want to recap for you all the possibilities that you could have in the School of IT. First of all, students who do not have a diploma pass can enter with a higher certificate by doing our one year higher certificate um, degree. Once you have completed the higher certificate and you have re reached an average of 60%, you can then move over into the diploma for uh, support services and continue your studies. If you have a diploma pass, you can enter the diploma directly. If you have a bachelor pass, you can enter the Bachelor of Information Technology directly. Both the diploma and the BIT are three year qualifications. But what I do want you to note is that it doesn't matter where you enter into our programs. As long as you achieve the minimum qualifications throughout, you are able to end up with a PhD and can continue with postgraduate studies all the way. So there is nothing stopping you from reaching your PhD. On the screen, you can see some very important information for contacting us. So I really hope that if technology is uh, your passion, that you will be reaching out to us on these uh, details that are on the screen now. Thank you very much. And with that, I would like to um, hand over to um, our next presenter, who is Professor Gerrit Craffert. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As said by you, my name is Gerrit Craffert. I am the acting uh, director of the School of the Built Environment and Civil Engineering. Within our school, we have four departments. They are the Building and Human Settlement Development Department, Construction and Management Department, uh, Quantity Surveying Department, and Civil Engineering Department. Within each one of these departments, there's various qualifications that you can apply for. Uh, um, just to take note, the, the uh, um, qualifications that's highlighted in yellow here are the ones that will be pertaining to you. So the first qualification, which is presented by the Building and Human Settlements Development, is a Diploma in Building, which is a three years full-time study qualification, which is typically followed by an advanced diploma in quantity surveying or construction management. And then they also have an undergraduate study, which is a degree, which is called a Bachelor of Human Settlements Development, which is a four years full-time study qualification. Construction management qualifications in, in, in that department, they have a Bachelor of Science in Construction Management, and uh, that is a three year full time study uh, um, degree. Typically, that is followed on by an honors degree in construction management or, or honors degree in construction health and safety management. That department typically has a various kind of uh, postgraduate de degrees if you are interested in those. Quantity surveying department, their undergraduate qualification is a Bachelor of Science in Construction Economics which is a three year full term study degree. And that is typically followed by a Bachelor of Science Honours in Quantity Surveying, which is one year, which is one year degree. They also have a whole suite of postgraduate qualifications which we can pursue after completing your honours degree. Then we have a civil engineering department. Their qualification, they have a Bachelor of Engineering Technology in, in civil engineering, which is three years full time study which is typically followed by a Bachelor of Engineering Technology Honours in Civil Engineering, which is one year study. They also provide a Master's in Engineering degree when you finished your Honours qualification. Let's have a look a little bit more in depth in each one of these qualifications. First of all, let's have a look at the Diploma, diploma in Building, which is a three years full time study. The purpose of this Qualification is that the building and construction industry is a dynamic industry with many opportunities of self-motivated and dedicated hardworking people. The industry, is, <coughs> the industry is becoming technically more sophisticated and computerized, which has resulted in a growing demand for suitably trained professionals. The environment demands that the professional managers have specialized skills regarding the latest construction methods and techniques being applied throughout the world. The admission requirements are 45% for mass pure or 45% for mass technical 
with an applicant score of 350. These are typically the first year modules that you will be registering for. What are the career opportunities for these, for these qualifications? This is a broad based qualification intended to prepare learners for supervisory and middle management level employment in the building industry and for technical support level in the quantity surveying profession. Persons achieving this qualification will be competent to support supervisors, managers, building surveyors and quantity surveyors. The qualification is accredited by the SACPCMP and by the SACQSP. Let's have a look at the Bachelor of Human Settlements Development degree, also within the building department, which is a four years full time study degree. Purpose of this qualification is to provide learners with specialist knowledge, skills, competencies and attitudes necessary to accelerate human settlement development in South Africa and create, upgrade and maintain sustainable human settlements. This will prepare them to fulfill the primary responsibilities of managing all the processes involved in the human settlements development and management and coordinating the stakeholders in the human settlement sector. Now, what are the requirements for this qualification? Either math literacy, 70% or 50% for math tech or math pure 50%. The applicant score when you are when you're taking math pure or technical is 370 and when you're taking math literature, the applicant score of 385 is required. In your first year, this will be typically the subjects that you will be taking. Career opportunities, there's various career opp opportunities at national and provincial governments, municipalities public entities, private sector companies, and non-governmental organizations. Let's have a look at the Bachelor of Science in Construction and Management in the Construction Management Department. This is an undergraduate degree of three years full-time study. The purpose of the qualification is to develop an appreciation and understanding of the management of business of construction and projects within the built environment. This includes the coordination, administration and management of resources and an understanding of management, economics and science and technology as it pertains to the built environment. The admission requirements is 55% for pure math and the applicant score of 370. These are the first year sub modules that you will be taking. Generally, the characteristics of a construction manager, you need to be um, you take, in, take initiative and in individuality, enjoy challenges, uh, enjoy indoor and outdoor work, be a group leader, enjoy working with people, can work as a team and obviously honestly and integrity is very important with this, with each, with each one of our qualifications. The qualification is accredited by the SACPCMP. Let's have a look at uh, the Bachelor of Science in Construction Economics, which is a three year full time study. The qualification presented in the quantity surveying department. The quantity surveyors work closely with architects, consulting engineers, project managers, planners and contractors on construction projects as the financial consultant. Their training and experience qualify them to advise on cost and contractual documents for different types of projects. The admission requirements, you need a 55% for pure math and an applicant score of at least 370. These are typically your first year modules that you will be taking for this qualification. Career opportunities, you can work for a, a, a private quantity surveying firm, public sector, local authorities, or you can actually go work for a construction company as well. Our degree is accredited by locally by the SACQSP and internationally by the RICS. Let's have a look at the Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Civil Engineering, which is a three year full time study degree. This is civil engineering is the practice of improving and maintaining the built and natural environments to increase the quality of life for present and future generations. Civil engineering technologists design, construct and maintain infrastructure such as shuts as structural components of buildings, containing structures, pipelines and transportation infra infrastructure. The admission requirements, mass pure or technical 60%, 
physical or technical science 50% and you need an applicant score of 370 at least. Alternatively, you can apply for a higher education certificate. You can go for a higher certificate in mechatronics engineering qualification with an average of 60% or above and a minimum of 60% for the mathematics module. These are typically your first first year subjects that you'll be taking. And this qualification is accredited by Excel. Finally, if you want to contact us, the, these are our details for admissions for financial aid and residence. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm going to pass over to Mr. Bobin Vachatsi now, which is going to talk to you about architecture. Unmute, Bobin. Good evening. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Thanks, Harit. Good evening. My name is Bobin Vergis. I'm the director of the School of Architecture. School of Architecture is a remarkable student-centric place where we nurture and develop creative and critical thinking skill sets. We transform you to become a remarkable professional in the built environment. Sorry about that. The School of Architecture comprises of two departments, namely the Department of Architecture and the Department of Architectural Technology and Interior Design. Between the two departments, three primary qualifications are offered. These include degrees in the fields of architecture, architectural technology, and interior design. We will elaborate further on these over the upcoming slides. A question many people ask is, what is the difference between architecture and architectural technology? At a basic level, an architect is a person who designs buildings and in many cases also supervises their construction. Architectural technologists work in the science of architecture, building design and construction. They work closely with architects and support to turn the architect's concept into reality in the completed construction. A unique aspect of the School of Architecture is the emphasis on studio-based learning. The studios are run by a professional team of registered architects who are dedicated to learning and teaching. Studio-based teaching encourages learners to work together in the studio. A large part of learning is through drawing, building models, both physical and digital, to understand spatial relationship and building form. Many of these studio projects are real-life projects and include collaborative efforts of significance that will be experienced in the working world. Let me speak about the Department of Architecture and Architectural Programs. The ethos behind the department is to critically engage with the making of humane architecture with a balanced theoretical and pragmatic approach shaped by the social, economic, and ecological informants with a locally rooted but globally aspiring architecture. The Bachelor of Architecture Studies program is a three-year professional degree. Once successfully completed, it can lead to registration with the South African Council of Architectural Professions, SACUP, as an architectural technologist. The BAS program acts as a foundation for entering the BAS Honours degree in architecture. This is a one-year degree and feeds into the final year. The fifth and the final year of architecture is a Master's of Architecture, which is a professional degree, which makes students eligible for the Master of Architectural Professional registration. The admission requirements to study BAS program include a minimum of 55% for pure maths, an AS score of 370, and the submission of a creative portfolio of works. 
This portfolio comprises of drawings and sketches and other creative endeavors as stipulated by the department. Successful applicants are required to appear for an interview and present their portfolio to the department selection panel before final acceptance to the course is granted. The process of design is enriched through real life projects, which is both invigorating and challenging. And this rewarding process demands dedication, time and commitment. The department engages number of collaborative projects. One of such projects is the design build project, which is handled by the second year students. It was an innovative project, successfully designed, raised funds, built and handed over the crash X3 to an NGO working in the Varma Township in Port Elizabeth in 2019. We also have collaborative projects. The significant example is the recent um, visit of a group of architecture students from the University of Ensa, Paris, with the BS. They worked with the BS honor students, offering a remarkable experience of North and South partnership in real sense. Speak about the School of Architectural Technology, the Department of Architecture, Technology and Interior Design programs. Architecture technologists are concerned with the development of buildings. This may include its design, the design of parts thereof, the presentation of the design and the assembly of various elements. The field of expertise of the qualified architectural technologist is mainly construction methods, materials and the preparation of drawings and graphic presentations. The architectural technology is a three year diploma qualification and can lead to registration with the South African Council of Architectural Profession, SACUP, as an architectural technologist. Graduates then have the choice to study further for an, either an advanced diploma in architectural technology that focuses on technology or one that focuses on design. The latter option enables the learner to further their studies as part of the Bachelor of Architectural Studies program. The admission requirements for the architecture technology include a minimum of either 45% for pure maths, 60% for maths lit, or 45% for technical maths. An AS score of 330 is required if you have maths or technical maths at school, and an AS score of 345 is required if you have maths lit. Similar to architecture, the submission of a creative portfolio of work is required as stipulated by the department. This includes successful applicants to appear for an interview and present their portfolio to the department staff member before the final acceptance to the course is granted. With both the architectural and architectural technologies qualifications, after successfully completing the degrees, graduates are required two years work experience and, an under, and a registered professional architect. After completing the work, and a professional exam, candidates may register as professionals with the SACUP according to the degree they have obtained. It's about the interior design program. The role of the interior designer is to create interiors with the spatial qualities that are habitable for people on all levels of experience, aesthetically, functionally, psychologically, and economically. The aim is to achieve comfort and efficiency, spaces that answer to the needs of the client, Therefore, the interior designer is concerned with the layout, finishes, details, furnishings, and lighting of such spaces in new buildings as part of the refurbishment projects. The admission requirements for the interior design program, either an AS score of 310 if you have maths or technical maths at school, and an AS score of 325 is required if you have maths lit. Again, the submission of a creative portfolio of work is required and an interview to present the portfolio to the department personnel before the final acceptance is granted is a required procedure. Employment opportunities for interior designers exist with the interior design firms, architectural practices, furniture manufacturers and suppliers and property developers or as self-employed consultants. The school has an ex excellent track record with the validating boards. We have national and international validation from SACUP and CAA for both architecture and architecture technology programs.
The School of Architecture is located on the south campus of the varsity. The school sits proudly on the third floor of the main library building, entering the scenic view across the library, forecourt and the main crawl area. If you have further queries regarding this presentation or admissions, please take note of the following personnel and who will be willing and able to answer all queries. Alternatively, you can send any queries to the displayed email address or via our departmental Facebook or website pages for more information. So if you're passionate about the built environment and the buildings, come and join us. Thank you and thank you for your time and listening. Let me hand over to Prof. Baron van Meek. Yes, welcome back everyone. Um, thank you to all the DOSs for those wonderful presentations. I'm sure that if you had any doubts about some qualifications that most of your questions have been answered. Nevertheless, if you have remaining questions, please feel free to type those questions in the question boxes. Um, we are really now going into a phase where we want to engage with you and answer any questions that, that, that you might um, have. So please go ahead. Um, well, I've already um, seen a few questions and um, some of our DOSs have already typed some answers, but maybe I can just go over those questions a little bit. Um, the first question from Razan was, um, if I don't meet the requirements for the B engine mechatronics, can I do the higher certificate first? I think that's the question and I think Prof. Uh, Roberts actually answered him. But yes, the short answer is yes. If you don't meet the requirements for any of the degrees in engineering, you can get entrance to the degree studies via the two higher certificates that we offer. Um, in architecture, um, Bobin, maybe you can just explain what happens if you don't meet the entry requirements for the Bachelor of Architecture straight away, because there's also a route to end up with the, the Masters um, in Architecture that lets you register as a professional. Maybe you can also just touch on that quickly before we go to the next question. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Um, with the three sets of programs available in architecture, architecture technology and interior design, we have got a wide range of qualifications on one hand, but at the same time, um, significant admission requirements. So if, if you look at, uh, say the architecture has got a higher requirements in terms of AS as well as um, the scores, and while the architect technology and interior design offers much more um, lower level of admission requirements. So between those three clusters, one can acquire the or one can get the admissions. And once you have got the admissions, um, there's a cross breeding from one program to the other. Say, for example, after completing the three year diploma program, you can specialize in design and come back into the architecture stream. So between architecture, architecture technology and interior design programs, you can get the full qualifications and then become a fully registered architect. Then I hope um, that answered the questions. Then your microphone is muted. Sorry about that. Um, thank you, um, Bobby. Um, there's an interesting question from Hayley, which I just want to touch on a little bit. She says, uh, what field should I keep in mind if I'm interested in artificial intelligence? Um, Sue typed a little bit there, but I just want to add that the Bachelor of Engineering in Mechatronics actually has a big component of artificial intelligence built in um, in, in the final years. And that degree exposes you to both the hardware and the software needed to build artificial intelligence systems. So that might also be an option for you um, to consider, Hayley. Um, then there's a question from uh, Rowan that says, I've been accepted for being technical me mechanical at NMU. I'm greatly interested in the aviation field. Um, similarly, um, 
Um, you might also consider the B Eng in mechatronics if, if you qualify for that degree because that deals with the electronics and the hardware and there's a big component in that degree that deals with uh, autonomous systems. So many of the postgraduate students actually go and, and research autonomous systems and drones and, and um, making drones and vehicles autonomous for the master and the doctoral study. So that is, that is maybe something that you can also consider. We do not have a specific qualification that deals with aviation. Um, so it's either mechanical or, or, or mechatronics. Good, then we come to anonymous. Um, the question is, what's the difference between a BSc construction management and um, a B inch tech in civil engineering. And I want to give this question to Prof. Kraft. The difference between construction management and civil engineering. Got it? Please unmute, Gerrit. Sorry about that. Um, fundamentally, with civil engineers, there you get two categories. Uh, um, those that are designing uh, uh, prior to construction and those which are involved with the actual construction works. And uh, mostly that will be uh, kind of infrastructure jobs. So uh, um, you will be involved in dams and bridges uh, um, and infrastructure. Construction management would be involved in the actual physical build, would involve with the physical building of uh, um, buildings and it, and it can spill over to civil engineering uh, kind of projects as well. Uh, uh, but construction managers will mostly be involved with the physical construction of buildings of structures. OK. Yes, thank you. I think uh, another important point is that the construction manager might be responsible for very large construction projects um, involving millions of rands, but the civil engineer um, or technologist will be um, responsible for signing off those structures to, 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 to certify that they are safe. And that is something that only um, the, the engineering um, team can do and look after. So that's also another difference that, that um, is important. So there's no more questions. Um, OK, there's some more. Uh, I think uh, Keenan Dalport asked, I would like to know if the mechanical engineering degree is internationally recognized. So let me just maybe speak a little bit about that. Uh, in mechanical engineering, we offer a three year degree that is called the Bachelor of Engineering Technology. And this degree through uh, the um, Sydney Accord is internationally recognized. So you can work as a technologist, as a professional technologist in South Africa, as an incorporated engineer in the UK and in also in all the other countries that are co-signatories of um, uh, the Sydney Accord. Yes, the degree is internationally recognized for working as a technologist uh, nationally and internationally, um, Keegan. Keenan. Um, I don't see more questions coming, so I've got a list of, of, of questions here, which we can go down a bit um, because we still have got some time left. Uh, first question on the list is, do you expect classes to be offered face to face or online in 2021? Very good question. Um, most probably face to face, but that will depend on what the pandemic is doing to us. So there might be an online component, but my guess is that we will be back to face to face in 2021. Second question. I would like to know what type of careers you get into with a diploma in IT and support services and put a person with a bachelor's degree in IT have a better chance compared to someone with a diploma in support services particularly. Um, Dr. Petratos, maybe you can answer this question. Thank you very much for the question. Um, I would like to emphasize that there is a different focus when you are looking at the BIT and when you are looking at uh, support services. 
BIT integrates um, existing components and allows you to use technology to solve problems in businesses, whereas the Diploma in Support Services is uh, rather focuses on actually um, fixing errors and uh, doing problem solving and troubleshooting. So whilst they are both very much um, in the technology side of things, they do have a different focus with regards to um, the, the type of work that you will be doing. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. I think um, you answered it. So there's a few more questions that came in. Um, I'm going to publish this one um, that says, uh, I would like to ask, what is the difference between a BSc in engineering and a Bachelor of Engineering? Yeah, I'll send you uh, the BSc in engineering and the Bachelor of Engineering are both four year degrees and there's no difference you can register as a professional engineer. There, however, is a difference between a four-year engineering degree, like a BSc in engineering or a BEng, and the Bachelor of Engineering Technology, which is a three-year degree. The one is um, allows you for registration internationally as an engineer, and the other one allows you for registration internationally as a professional technologist. So um, that would be the difference. So um, there's another interesting question um, coming in. Let me just go down the list. Anonymous said that can someone who completed a B-Eng in mechatronics work as a mechanical engineer? like work in physical fields such as maintaining mining plants, installing and designing car and aircraft engines. Um, maybe, uh, Alan, you can answer that question. I can also afterwards add some something if needed. Yes, thanks, Ben. Uh, just to go back to the question again, uh, sorry. The B engine mechatronics focus is a lot more on mechanical systems, electronic systems, and computer control systems. The aspect that a mechanical engineer does focuses a lot more on the mechanical design, mechanical materials, and whatnot. So a B engine mechatronics might have difficulty in mining, except if you're doing the automation side of the mining plant. Uh, but effectively, they have dealt with all the other aspects like designing of uh, aircraft of engines, any types of engines that understand that. The B engine, as I said, again, the B engine mechatronics is more about automation and everything that links to automation, your mechanical and electronics and computer systems. So you won't have the great detail of the pure mechanical side that a mechanical engineer would have. I hope that clarifies the point for you. Back to you, Ben. Good, thank you. I think uh, we've we've got a, a couple of new questions that came in. Um, so let me just find my my queue here on the list. Um, I think I think just to come back to that that anonymous question regarding B engine mechatronics. The mechatronics is sort of um, a mixture of mechanical, electronics, and computer systems. So it focuses very much on automation and the systems for factory automation and, and, and robotics. So, so the, the, the short answer is yes, um, you will be able to work almost anywhere, in, including mining plants um, and in the aviation field. Anything that deals with, with automation um, is, is suitable for you. Then the next question from um, Quinana is, good evening, I've been accepted for the BN in civil engineering. What happens if I do not make the requirements for mathematics? Um, may I still do the degree or will I be allowed to switch to a different degree, for example, quantity surveying or construction management? Um, so let's, let's answer your question in two batches. If you do not make the minimum requirements, you can always enroll for the higher certificate. 
the high certificate either in mechatronics or in renewable energy. And if you do well enough in the high certificate, then you can carry on with, with any, any of the degrees in engineering. So that's the first part of your question. The second part of your question, will I be able to switch? Um, the answer is if there's space available in quantity surveying or construction management um, at the beginning of the year and maybe you do not make the, you know, get the right score in maths, then certainly you will be allowed to switch, but it will not be totally automatic. Then there's a question from Z. Is the B in stack in electrical a light current or a heavy current degree? The B in stack in electrical covers both heavy current and light current. So, so it is um, the full spectrum that, that, that you do. Then there's a question, I think it's, it's already been answered that one. Um, it's a question from Daniel. Generally, how many learners start off with a software development class and how many are left behind by the end of the year? Um, very interesting question. Um, maybe Dr. Stratos can answer that question. Yes, thank you very much. Um, there is always some students that uh, do stay behind, but we have an approximate uh, pass rate of, I would say, about 70% of our students at first year level. But Daniel, I don't want you to measure yourself against everybody else. I want you to put in your get to us. So thank you very much for the interesting question. OK, so um, let me go to some more questions that came in just now. So there's a, a question from um, Lungulu. I would like to ask if during the first year I will be doing the basics of electrical engineering or is it enhanced maths and physics? During the first year, you will carry on with maths, you will carry on with physics, but you will also do electrical engineering. So it's all three, it's not, it's not one. So, um, uh, you won't be stuck with maths and physics only, but those will be two subjects on the list of subjects that you would have to do. There's a question to asking um, if I were to study mechatronics, is it specialized, is, um, possible to specialize in an automotive, automotive field besides the manufacturing process of engine components? Yes, it's very, very wide. You specialize in automation, so that can include automation in any discipline and in any um, setting. So it's a very broad based degree and um, our graduates are highly in demand. Um, I think there's a question from Nsaku, but um, I see that um, Dr. Petratos already typed an answer to that. So let me quickly see if there are more new questions that came in. Um, anonymous asked. What is now? If, if I had a mechanical engineering diploma at the college, how would I go about getting my degree at university and how would this work? Um, I will try to answer that in part, but I will also then hand over to Mr. Roberts. Um, if you've got a mechanical engineering diploma, I suppose that is an N6 diploma, um, then via the RPL route, you would be able, depending on how you perform, to get access to, to one of our qualifications. But um, Alan, do you have some more wisdom? Uh, yes, Ben, just possibly just to wrap it up for this side. Um, they can apply and get limited credits depending on the right NQF level, but yes, we'll certainly look at them. Thank you, Ben. Um, my, my fellow presenters are reminding me that, that we are um, running out of time. And I was just getting into this question and answer um, session session now. So um, I still wanted to speak about, um, you know, that we have a very strong emphasis on on on, on um, gender balance, and in some 
um, cases like IT and architecture, it's, it's an equal number of, of, of males and females. And that in engineering, we're really doing our best to, to get more um, uh, a better gender balance. And um, we are slowly becoming less male, male dominated. And we, we even have a, um, a woman in engineering leadership academy, um, which, which might be quite interesting to, um, to all our learners. So don't think that any of these qualifications or fields are not meant for you. It's meant for everyone that qualifies to, um, to be admitted. So um, all, all of us, all of you are welcome. So that brings me then to the close of, of the session. It was fantastic to engage with you. Please visit um, the website of the faculty. Please post uh, um, more answer questions um, if you have more email the, the HODs or secretaries directly. Their, their contact details are on the website. And with that, I want to close this webinar and thank you for your time. It was great spending time with you. Go well. <laughs>